So we have an extremely tragic topic to dive into for today's video as a cruise ship passenger recently and unfortunately lost their life after they drowned during an excursion while visiting a port over in Jamaica. Now I am going to show you guys a news clip that way nothing gets taken out of context. However, as unfortunate as this is, I do believe this situation alone provides a big lesson that I want to share with all of you. As somebody that does cruise regularly almost every other week at this point, I see a lot and as much as I love cruising and as beautiful as it is, I am able to kind of take off the rose covered glasses and just kind of see it for what things are take out the glam and I do believe it's important so I do invite all of you to stick around after the news clip because well it could potentially save your life a woman in Osceola County is remembering her husband after he died while visiting a waterfall in Jamaica West Street's Marley Martinez spoke with Damian Benjamin's widow about how he wanted to make a name for himself as a tattoo artist in Kissimmee this is all his artwork. This is all his artwork he drew. Yulisa Blakes says people love her husband, Damian Benjamin, for his eye. I was, I was like, oh my God, how could you draw, you know, so realistic? For Yulisa, it was Damian's compassion that brought them together for 11 years. I ended up getting sick. I had a heart attack um, at 29. A couple years ago, she had open heart surgery and Damian was there through sickness and in health. He was just there for me nonstop, always, all these years. So as a thank you, Yolisa booked them a cruise to Jamaica. And that was my gift to him. He was happy. He was happy. She says last Wednesday, after the cruise ship arrived in Jamaica, they visited the Blue Hole in the town of Ocho Rios. Yolisa says the excursion was not booked through the cruise line. He wanted to jump in the waterfall, and I was against it um, in the beginning because... I was scared. He wanted me to go with him, and I just couldn't because of my heart. So I just made the decision, like, okay, if baby, you want to go, you know, go. Um, and that was the last time I saw him, yeah. Yulisa says Damien drowned. He was 32. So first of all, of course, my sincere condolences go out to the friends, family, and loved ones of Damien Benjamin, also his wife, Alyssa Blakes. This is absolutely sad. There is no way to slice it. This is heartbreaking, to be honest. Imagine going on a vacation and it ending this way after, well, they say 11 years of being together and Alyssa going through open heart surgery. That's that's it just goes to show how quickly things can change in life. You got to you really got to appreciate things in the moment. Now, just looking at the situation. So this couple originally was sailing on board the Carnival Sunrise and they had a port of call, a stop over in Ocho Rios, Jamaica, when all of this went down. Now, they went to an area known as the Blue Hole. To locals and other people, they call it the Cool Blue Hole. It is a natural pool that was created through a sinkhole and a waterfall over in that area. Now, I've been there a couple times. Back when I worked on a Norwegian Escape, we used to go there regularly. I've been to the Blue Hole. And for, let's say, your average person that maybe wants to do an excursion, whether they book with the cruise line or just kind of find it themselves, you can get the Blue Hole or access to it for a reasonable price. If you want to just go there by yourself, you can pay anywhere between $25 or $30 a person. Or if you want to do an excursion where you have a guide that takes you to like this like secret pathway and all this other stuff as well, you can pay about $150. Overall, I would say pretty reasonable prices for excursions, whether you book with the cruise line or not. So we can see why the appeal is there, why people are attracted to the Blue Hole. The thing is, when you get over there, there is no lifeguard on duty, and you're kind of there to fend for yourself. The only person that would be maybe supervising it, and it is if you maybe are with a guide of some sort. The waterfall is probably the biggest, most exhilarating attraction over there. You have like ropes that will also put you into the water as well. But the waterfall is something that everybody either wants to do or they're afraid of doing. That's kind of like that final like, oh my God, are you going to do it? People are usually hanging out there debating if they're going to do it, do the jump. It's about, uh, I want to say 20 feet. Now, I do have some comments here from people that have talked about going over to the waterfall. I have done it as well. They were claiming in this comment that it was 40 feet. It's not. It's like 20. But they are correct in saying that once you jump in, the current from the waterfall and just, the, the, well, it's, it's moving you around all over the place. And being that it is like a very exhilarating experience between the adrenaline rush and let's say uh, the, the water kind of maybe not pushing you down, but it's, it's a little bit harder to get up than you think. And when you jump from that high 20 feet, it is, it's a minute. It takes a while for you to kind of swim up. For a lot of people that are, let's say, not strong swimmers, it can be a very, uh, well, an adrenaline rushed event that's taking place and you kind of freaking out a little bit. You're a little scared and 
Well, this is the problem that does come with doing excursions such as this, especially when people don't typically do these types of activities. And this is the main point that I want to bring up for this video. So being that I do cruise a lot, and, and by the way, I'm just using myself for an example because I can't explain something from all of your perspective because we all have well, different risk tolerances and different experiences as far as the amount of times we may cruise and what we do during our cruising experience. But for me, I cruise a lot, as many of you know, and I'm not exactly big on like cruise ship excursions. In the news clip, that's what they pointed out that, oh, this was not a cruise excursion. To me, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't really make much of a difference as long as you're going through the proper channels. I would just say when it comes to this whole situation in general, I do believe that proper risk assessment is key. One thing that people have to understand, like I said, when it comes to risk assessment, and then it's that, and then you as well, just also knowing your own personal tolerance of what you can and can't do. You got to know your limits. I personally believe that in life, yes, you should always take risk. But the problem is there are a lot of people that try to like, I guess, over exceed those risks because they are on a vacation. One thing I always point out on this channel here, whenever we talk about these tragedies or an unfortunate event that's taking place, is that a lot of people don't understand that even if you are on the vacation of a lifetime, this amazing, beautiful, perfect cruise with beautiful people traveling to some of the most beautiful places on planet Earth, you are still living in the real world. And in the real world, things can happen. My point here is simple. If you can't drive a moped, then it's probably not advisable for you to drive a moped for the first time in a foreign country. I got a story I got to tell you guys about in a minute that happened to myself and my girlfriend. Horrible mistake, but it's going to just kind of round out the point here. But I'll also say, if you are not comfortable with driving on the other side of the road, let's say, for example, if you're in like a, a British country or something like that, and they drive on the left side as opposed to the right, you probably shouldn't be renting a car. It's maybe not advisable. If you're not the strongest swimmer, you probably shouldn't jump in the middle of the ocean or off of a cliff into a uh, say 20 foot drop into the waterfall keep in mind again this is no disrespect and i'm not trying to say that uh what happened here with, with damien is his fault entirely but i do believe that risk assessment is very important and whenever we go on cruises or these type of experiences I do know for a fact, and many of you will probably agree, it's very easy to just mentally just disconnect from reality and say, hey, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take the risk because you're on a vacation and you want to do something that you've probably never done before. Getting into the moped story, because I do believe this is the perfect example, about five years or so ago when I was like ridiculously poor and Lauren and I, we were just like starting to date, we decided to take a beautiful trip over to Mexico, my first time there. And I told her, no, I don't want to do it. I don't want to have to deal with the cartel and all that, right? But lo and behold, I wanted to travel. I was a little bit of a thrill seeker even then. I still am now. We decided to go over there just our first time, get a car, and just drive around Mexico. Now, it was beautiful. I had a great time. Changed my life forever. We decided to go to an island just off the coast of Cancun known as Isla Mujeres. And while we were there, because we were broke, I mean, and when I say broke, I mean broke, broke, right? We're over here like idiots. And uh, we decided that we wanted to get some transportation to kind of ride around the island. Now, instead of getting a golf cart, we looked around and uh, we decided we wanted to get a moped. Now, I have only driven a moped one other time around the U.S. And I looked around and there were a lot of tourists. However, none of the tourists over there had mopeds. They had golf carts. But lo and behold, for us, we decided to get one anyway. And, uh, well, we'd soon regret it. As well, we were driving around, and, man, I come around speeding around this corner, and there is a giant pothole. The locals know there are potholes all over the island, so they, they drive with the expectation that something's going to happen. For me, I got too comfortable. Lauren and I go flying, and next thing you know, my toes bleeding all over the place. Her knees bleeding all over the place. We're on the ground trying to lick our wounds. Nobody came to help. Until about maybe 10, 15 minutes later, some locals came with some uh, alcohol, put it on my toe, put it on Lauren's uh, uh, knee, and, well, we were good to go after, of course, crying like little babies. But I learned the lesson. And even now, as somebody that is traveling by myself all the time, I'm on cruises all the time by myself, I'm going to Mexico next week by myself over there for six days, I'm going to get my scuba diver certification. But even then, my point is, I do proper risk assessment these days, right? I'm not overly cautious when it comes to things, but I do believe that you have to take some time and take a second and really think about the things that you are doing as far as what you're doing with your body and the actions that you are taking. That way you don't put yourself at a crazy risk to the point to where you can get harmed. Now, of course, I do have to add in the fact that even if you do your due diligence, even if you do the greatest risk assessment of all time, Guys, we still live in the real world, so regardless of what happened with the situation with Damien or anybody else for that matter, I remember a couple months ago, there was a woman that was in the Bahamas that got bit by a shark and she, she bled to death. Very horrific situation, however, she was just going snorkeling. And 
I think many would argue she probably didn't do anything wrong. However, things still happen. My point is that we live in the real world and, well, unfortunately, things are going to happen in life. So you got to just keep on living and, well, just do what you can. But either way, guys, that's what I have for today's video. Of course, let me know your thoughts on this in the comment section below. Have you ever been to the blue hole? Have you taken the, the jump off of the cliff into the water? How did you feel with that experience? Was it exhilarating? Was it scary? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As usual, know that I love and appreciate every single one of you. Hit that like button on your way out. Go follow my other channel, Jay the Nomad, because I am heading to Miami tomorrow to go board the NCL Joy. Uh, I've never been on that ship before, so I'm, I'm excited. My first Breakaway Plus class ship since I work for Norwegian, so make sure you guys check that out. I'll see all of you later. Take it easy.